We're going to prove that the function f of x equals the absolute value of x with a domain and codomain of the real numbers is continuous on its entire domain. We'll do this using the epsilon delta definition of a function being continuous at a point, which is put here for your convenience. This is a straightforward continuity proof, so give it a try yourself. If you get stuck, consider the reverse triangle inequality. We begin our proof by taking an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero, and since we want to prove that our function is continuous on its entire domain, we take an arbitrary point C from the domain. Then we just have to prove that the function is continuous at this point. From there, our proof will look something like this. We'll take delta to equal something that's going to work, then we'll have that for all elements of our domain, for all x in the real numbers, where x is within delta of the chosen point c, we have that the absolute value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. This is the form that our proof will take. To figure out what our delta needs to be equal to, what we want to do is play around with this expression a little bit to see what delta we'll need to choose to guarantee that this is less than epsilon. Of course, we don't know that it's less than epsilon yet. We've just written that down because that's where we're trying to go. So now let's play with this to figure out what delta will make our proof work. And remember, roughly speaking, delta is measuring how close we have to get to the chosen point C to guarantee that our function's values are really close to f of C. Since we know f of x is equal to the absolute value of x, we can rewrite this expression as the absolute value of f of x, which is the absolute value of x, minus f of C, which is the absolute value of C. Then remember to deal with the absolute value of a sum, we often use the triangle inequality. For the absolute value of the difference of two absolute values, we can use the reverse triangle inequality. The reverse triangle inequality theorem tells us that the absolute value of the difference of two absolute values is less than or equal to the absolute value of that difference without the absolute values on the inside. So the absolute value of the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of c is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c. And hey, we know that this is going to be less than delta because we're only considering x values where the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So if we want this to be less than epsilon, what should we set delta equal to? Clearly, setting delta equal to epsilon will make the proof work. Delta has to be greater than zero, and of course, epsilon is greater than zero, so delta equals epsilon is a perfectly valid value. So if we take delta equal to epsilon, then for all elements x of our domain, where the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, the absolute value of f of x minus f of c is equal to this, which is less than or equal to this by the reverse triangle inequality, we know that this is less than delta, and delta is equal to epsilon. And so the absolute value of f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon for all elements of our domain that are within delta of the chosen point c. And so we've proven that the absolute value function is continuous on the real numbers. So